Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nephi and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my experience as a first time mom and raising a son with the diagnosis of laryngoblasia. Um, my son was diagnosed with that at six weeks old. So if you're interested, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. So at six weeks old, um, I noticed that my son was um, kind of breathing a little bit funny. Um, I noticed that every time I would breastfeed him or um, whenever I would um, pump milk and put that in a bottle for him um, that he would have these episodes of um, it sounded like gasping for air um, and then it kind of sounded like there was trapped milk you know whenever he was trying to swallow and then there was like these episodes of like choking and coughing up milk um, and this was the first time that we had experienced this when he was six weeks old six weeks old so it's not like we had to be experiencing it before this was the first time um, and then at that rate I just knew something just wasn't right um, so I remember um, not being able to get in touch with his pediatrician that day because it was late on in the night and so what I ended up doing was going online um, to um, find his online doctor and um, they're pretty much available around the clock um, it'll be a different person every time but all of these people are licensed and you know experienced professionals you know that can get back to you um, it's really um, user-friendly you know to be able to go online and you can chat back and forth online you can text these people you can call these people you can send them videos etc so what I ended up doing um, was sending the doctor um, a video um, of how my son sounded every single time that evening um, that he would either um, get breast milk from a bottle or breast milk from you know um, being breastfed and um, the episodes that he was experiencing every single time I noticed that it had become a pattern the first time I wasn't really sure if that was just kind of like, you know, babies sound weird <laughs> when they're born, you know, their lungs are still developing, you know, their airways are maturing and things like that or whatever. So um, babies have stranger breathing than adults do. Um, and obviously someone who was professionally taking care of babies years ago, I know a lot. And I've experienced a lot so I know that some babies have no noisy breathing and that's um, completely normal um, for some babies but in this case you know my son was already a month and a half and we had never experienced this before so when it did I, I was really alarmed you know to be able to reach out to um, his pediatrician or another pediatrician nonetheless so um, I remember reaching out to the pediatrician and I ended up sending um, her a video um, and then we were kind of chatting back and forth about when these episodes would happen how long they would happen for and certain things like that of that nature and long story short that night um, he was diagnosed with a laryngomalacia so what that is is um, you know everybody has a larynx at the back of their throat and so I'll put things on the screen so you guys can kind of know what I'm talking about and um, what that is in, in other words is just your voice box so with that being said my son actually has a floppy larynx and so people with lar laryngomalacia don't have um, a clear pathway for air to go through um, so what it ends up doing is making a lot of noise so there's going to be um, a mild case of laryngomalacia, a moderate case of laryngomalacia, and a severe case of laryngomalacia. Thankfully, um, according to the online doctor and according to the next day when we was able to get him into the pediatrician to see his regular doctor, um, that my son actually had a moderate version of um, laryngomalacia. So um, what this looked like for us at the time was that he had quiet breathing uh, practically all day long for the most part. Um, he never had any other issues, um, you know, doing anything else. You know, as a normal baby, he functioned as a normal baby. But every time he would breastfeed or drink breast milk from a bottle, we noticed that he would have these choking episodes where it sounded like he was gasping for air or choking on milk, you know, whenever he would swallow. So that's what that looked like for us um, when he was six, week old, six weeks old and it was just really terrifying as a parent to be able to experience that with your newborn baby because you know of course as parents we want everything to be perfect, we want everything to be fine, we want our babies to be okay and um, honestly it was really um, just frightening in the beginning. But it took a little bit more um, education and experience um, with taking care of our son um, for me to get to a place where I started to feel um, not so fearful anymore um, and I started to feel a lot more um, at ease with you know his diagnosis in his, his condition um, so what that took is just kind of learning on um, the best practices and things like that whatever so um, pretty much our doctor told us since that it wasn't severe case it wasn't a situation where he was gonna be failure to thrive or at least at the time um, he wasn't gonna need you know like a feeding tube um, he wasn't gonna need any surgery there wasn't gonna be anything of that nature we really just had to do the best that we could do as parents so we were suggested to make sure that um, 
we were burping our son um, frequently. Of course, you're supposed to burp a newborn. That's kind of, you know, normal. Um, but some babies are really great at burping on their own. But for us, that was imperative that we made sure that we actually heard a, like, you know, a, a vocal burp, you know, from him after he would feed um, every time by breast. He was ex exclusively breastfed. Um, and so we would make sure that we would um, burp him at least once or twice after every feed. Um, and then we would actually have to hold him upright for one whole hour. Um, our pediatrician suggested 30 minutes to an hour but obviously you're with your baby every day you know um, kind of how they operate and you know what's gonna work best for them and I noticed that 30 minutes just wasn't enough for my son at that point we had to make sure that every time he ate which was every two to three hours that um, you know he had to be burped and then he had to be held upright for at least an hour before we were able to lay him down um, and of course these were the days of like <laughs> a million and one snuggles so it was always nice to always have him close to me you know in that you know nature and stuff like that so that was never really a burden on us as parents to be able to have to hold him after we fed him because that's what I would kind of normally do anyway regardless, even before um, we found out that he had lar laryngomalacia um, and so that's what those are the two things two main things that we would do but also we had to um, you know narrow down the amount of milk that we were giving him we had to make sure that he would have breaks in between his bottles um, if he was um, drinking breast milk from a bottle or if I was exclusively breastfe breastfeeding him um, then I would have to make sure that I would put him on the breast that he could latch for a little bit then I would have to take him off and give him a break and hold him upright just to make sure that he wasn't going to be choking on his milk um, and that the milk would go down and everything would settle the way that it was supposed to so that's kind of uh, what we had to do from about six weeks right out. around three months or so like three and a half months and that's when I noticed that my son um, was no longer having these choking episodes um, he was able to drink his um, milk by bottle and he was able to take the breast and not have any issues at all um, and then we noticed that we no longer had to give him breaks he actually started to learn to burp on his own quite frequently so we didn't have to do that as much anymore and we noticed that um, when we would lay him down he wasn't having as much issues with reflux so that's another thing that come that came up with uh, for um, for him uh, with having laryngomalacia he had silent reflux and so that was kind of scary in the beginning because we didn't have any idea when he was going to be having you know that form of you know indigestion and things like that Whatever, where you know his milk would be coming back up that was really bad in the beginning where we would lay him down and instantly he'd be like you know choking up his milk but eventually once um, you know he got about three and a half months old we noticed that those episodes no longer happened um, as of today um, my son is actually just turned seven months old and um, he no longer he hasn't had any choking episodes or anything like that or whatever since he was about three and a half like I said to the three and a half four month mark I feel like that's when all those things subsided the only things that stuck was the reflux he still has silent reflux so every once in a while I'll hear him swallowing and that's how I kind of know like you know um that he's having reflux and I'll just grab him and just hold him upright it doesn't happen as frequently as it used to and then the other thing that I haven't mentioned in this video so far is that we were told that to expect slow weight gain um for my son for the first six months um or so depending on you know his um how things were going to go for him because every baby is different but we were told that we could expect slow weight gain for the first six months of his life and so what that looked like for us was my son was born at six pounds even and by the time he went home he was five pounds and two ounces and so um technically um that's um, a little small like it's not extremely small like four or three pounds or anything like that but that's just a little small and so um, we got you know he got home he was eating every two to three hours he actually always fed well that's the thing in the midst of all this laryngomalacia diagnosis and condition um, he never really had trouble like trying to eat like he always was such a great eater he would always take the breast and bottle whatever you gave him like he's still that way till this day literally um, he was such a great eater and um, you know he he was picking up weight initially so um, so by the time um, my son was let's see because I have his weight gain okay so by the time my son was uh, one month he was six pounds and 13 ounces so obviously six pounds to seven pounds is actually normal birth weight for the average baby so imagine being a month and a half pretty much and you're still six pounds so obviously my son we had realized that my son was um, gaining weight pretty slowly but the thing about it was he wasn't in the failure to thrive range because he was so happy he was so healthy he was eating so well so our doctors just kept telling us to just continue to feed him um, continue to you know do all the things that we've been doing and then eventually 
eventually his weight would pick up and if it didn't then we would go the, across the bridge of doing something about it but um, long story short my um, son's weight did end up picking up over time so we're really happy about that but like I said one month and a half my son was still six pounds um, and 13 ounces um, and let's see um, when he was four months old um, no not four months old when he was two months old he was eight pounds um, and change so that's still you know a little small some babies are born eight or nine pounds you know so he's two months old he's eight pounds and change and then he gets to four months and then he's 12 pounds that's still underweight um, then he gets to five pounds and he's 14 uh, then he gets to five months I'm sorry he gets to five months and he's 14 pounds so that's still underweight but my doctors I will stop and say this before it sounds like complaining or anything like that whatever um, uh, um, me and my husband as well as um, his pediatrician were extremely happy happy for every pound that he would gain because he still wasn't in a position where it was like oh my gosh this is um you know serious and this is critical and he's in the failure to thrive he was never severely underweight he was a little underweight a few pounds less than boys his age but he wasn't um ever severely underweight so we were not extremely concerned we were happy because we knew he was eating well and he was so happy and healthy otherwise and then his pediatricians would literally like clap in the office every time he would gain a pound or two so everything was very positive and it's still been to the this day um, and then they have he's not been in the range where they've needed to do something about his weight um, the only thing that they suggested was, was that we started solids early so what I ended up doing um, was when my son was three months old um, obviously you know the World Health you know pediatricians you know whatever that organization and association I forget what it's called I'll put it on the screen they will tell you that you shouldn't start your, your kids on solids until six months and obviously if you can go later than that the, you know the longer they stay on their breast milk or formula is the better um, but my son you know because he was um, underweight our pediatrician suggested that if he had the, the the feeding reflex meaning like he could move food from the front of his mouth to the back of his mouth that um, it was okay for us to be able to put him on solids if he could do that and he could do that we he already had it um, really early so at three months and one week I started my son on solids so his first food was actually going to be oatmeal um, so what I would do is I just would dilute his oatmeal with some breast milk and that's how we fed him for like several weeks before we started any other solid foods I think by by the time he was four and a half months old that's when we started um introducing other solids like i think his next food was going to be banana and then he had um you know some blueberries things like that or whatever these were mainly purees because of his condition um but he definitely did have solids earlier um, so yeah, five months, he was 14 pounds and then, um, his six months checkup was actually at the end of May and, um, he was 15 pounds and seven ounces. So with that being said, he's still not in the failure to thrive range. So my doctors, I mean, his doctors have not felt like, oh my gosh, we need to find something to do to make him pick up weight. They actually feel that his weight is actually healthy for him being born at six pounds and going home at five pounds, two ounces. So I love that his doctors offer. Um, was very positive about his condition um, they were never negative or judgmental or anything like that like how a lot of parents have to experience when it comes to children's weight um, and then they were very like um, particular to him being on his own spectrum instead of comparing to him to other babies his age like never did we ever go in the office and they tell us like okay well boys his age are typically X amount of pounds and you know certain amount of inches like they never this till this day they've never done that and my son is seven months old um, so for us Thankfully, um, his case went from moderate and to now mild, where it doesn't necessarily affect his daily life, except for um, sometimes my son has labored breathing. And so what that is, it's not anything that sounds critical, it's not anything that looks critical or feels critical for him, um, but it's just more so he sounds like he's congested sometimes, and it doesn't last um, for long periods of time. I would say when he was younger, like in the two to three month range, it sounded like he was congested, like as if he was sick all the time, like when he would breathe, that's what it sounded like. He had congestion and he never did have congestion my son has never been sick otherwise since he's been born but it just sounds like labored breathing he'll breathe and it sounds like you're a little congested and usually these days it'll I'll hear it and it'll pop up and it'll last for like a few minutes and it'll go away for the rest of the day when he was younger we heard it all the time like you would think that he was a sick baby and so I know that um Laringo Malaysia from what we were told and based on my research is something that children typically grow out of by the time that they turn one years old um in the more 
severe cases. Um, some of those kids have to be on feeding tubes. Some of them are in and out of the hospitals. Some of them really don't gain weight at all. And some of them don't grow out of it by the time that they're three years old. So um, I really feel for those babies because um, obviously my son does have laryngomalacia, whether it's mild, moderate, severe, he does have it. And he still continues to deal with that um, every day. And he's seven months old, even though it doesn't affect his life as much as it did when he was younger. I still feel for the babies that go through that and have a more severe case than him. And so I'm literally in a group on Instagram and social media chatting with other moms, just encouraging them and things like that or whatever, and sharing a lot of positivity and also just sharing my story so other people can know. This is not something that I've heard of before. And it, laryngomalacia is not necessarily a new term, but I'm finding that it's not as common as people, um, well, it's not as common in conversation, if that makes any sense. It is very common among a lot of babies, but it's not common in conversation. When I tell people that my son has laryngomalacia, they're like, well, he looks healthy. He sounds healthy. Like, what is that? They have no idea what that is. So I'm sh I wanted to post this video just in case there's any moms out there that maybe your child has it and you have no idea and you're watching this video and like, want to find out more and want to ask your pediatrician or you know get with your doctors and things like that whatever to see if that's what your child has because maybe you're just confused and you just had no idea what was going on with your child so that's one reason why I'll be sharing it but also just to spread awareness even for other moms just to let you know that you're not the only one out there that has a child that has laryngomalacia um, and so I definitely love linking arms you know with other moms to um, you know just create a positive community around certain things you know there's a lot of children that have birth defects in the world there's a lot of children that have health problems um, there's so many children that are struggling you know on the day-to-day -day. and so um, you know sometimes you can feel like the parent like you're the only one like this only my child that's dealing with this but that's definitely not the case and that's why I also wanted to share this video um, so you know um, it really is um, empowering to know that you know there are so many health professionals out there that are willing to go you know to the ends of the earth to make sure that you know um, parents are educated and they have the resources that they need you know for their children um, whatever their cases might be um, you know uh, my son is very happy every day he's super healthy he's hitting so many milestones you know um, that are definitely normal you know for his um, age range um, and so everything is really great you know I just wanted to share this video like I said just to spread awareness um, to let other moms know that you're not the only one and let me know in the comment section below if you've heard of this before or if your child has laryngomalacia or if you know somebody whose child has laryngomalacia um, and you know we can kind of start a conversation around this um, I will say that um, sometimes it's tough um, talking about um, him having laryngomalacia because a lot of times people just assume that he's just a small baby <laughs> my son is petite he's starting to chunk up these days he's got a few rolls now so it's really exciting we're so happy every time he gains even a little bit of weight we celebrate everything, you know, that he does when it comes to um, him, you know, um, pretty much conquering his condition. Um, and so it's kind of sad when people just automatically assume that he's not being fed enough. So there's this assumption that my son is small because he's not being fed well, but that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. Um, literally, my son, I always tell everybody and laugh, my son is a bottomless pit. He's been eating solids since he was three months old. He has solids at seven months old, three times a day. He is still getting his breast milk and he also has some formula. So um, people just make their assumptions, you know, based on his size and it's like, you know, I I think that it's sad to go around and judge other people's babies with not even having all of the full information about what's going on with, on with them in the first place. And even if he didn't have laryngomalacia and he was just small, stop going around and telling people that their babies are big and their babies are small. That's annoying. <laughs> My son has labor breathing and so what that means is they burn so many calories breathing that they can't hold on to the pounds. And so that's what ends up happening. Imagine going to the gym every day. Of course, at some point you're going to lose weight. So when he's breathing like that, um, that's what's causing him to burn so many calories and things like that or whatever so that's causing the slow weight gain and so um you know, I've had to tell people and remind people over and over again, he's not small because he's just small. He has laryngomalacia and it affects his weight gain. And, and he has a floppy larynx and that affects his airway and his breathing. Um, so, you know, that's just that. Um, of course, you know, people, when they don't know better, they don't say or do better because they just have no idea. So I think that it's great to be able to get this out there, to let other people know what exactly this is, what that means for your child and what it could look like depending on if your child has it mildly, moderately, 
slightly or severely um, so that's pretty much it you know um, that all that I have to say at this point <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching um, thank you for supporting my channel like I said let me know in the comment section below if you've heard of Laringo Malaysia before if your child has it then let's get the conversation going let's encourage each other um, let's share our stories you know you never know how you sharing your story can help someone else out there if you haven't already go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video and I will see you guys in the next one.